Good quality code. Who wants that? Am I kidding? Everyone. Everyone needs good quality code. And we developers go to great lengths to do that. We use tools such as IntelliJ IDEA to write our code. It detects issues with our code bases while we are writing it. It warns us and even offers solutions or code replacements for all sorts of issues, from simple ones like code formatting to more serious ones like vulnerable dependencies. But what happens when we're working in teams? How do we ensure that members of our team tick the same check boxes for code quality? Could we combine a list of specific checks and share them across team members? Could we also track and share the health of our code base? These are good questions, but I don't have answers to all of them. Don't worry, because our speaker today definitely does. Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining in for another IntelliJ IDEA live stream. I'm your host, Mala Gupta, and now let me add our speaker to the stream. Hello, hey, Mala. Anton. Hi, you there. Pleasure to have Hello, you. Hello, everybody. Pleasure to have you present with us today. Likewise. Thanks for having in, me. Oh, I, I look so looking forward to learn from you. Um, let me quickly introduce Anton. Uh, Anton is a fellow developer advocate with JetBrains, a fellow Java champion, and a popular presenter. He's a great artist. And if, if you haven't checked out his circle art, please do. He has a link to that in his Twitter bio. They're amazing uh, drawings, Anton, I must say. And I have, a quick, uh, I have a quick question for you. Would I be able to use Kodana for my local projects or only for my hosted projects? I think that's a great question. And uh, we're going to ask this, uh, answer this question in detail. But basically, on your local machine, you're mostly working with IntelliJ and with all the powerful engines and uh, features that IntelliJ provides to you. And then there is a question, can I use the same tools and the same technology for the teamwork, and that is what Kadana is for. Great. So I I believe everyone who is watching this, uh, even right now, they would be they have a lot to learn. And uh, before I let you take the stage, let me quickly share some co quick housekeeping details. Everyone watching, please use the YouTube chat to post your questions. We'll try to answer your questions as you post them. Uh, Anton will take a break depending on how he's placed during his live demo and uh, during, uh, and of course, at the end of the session as well. And the most important question, yes, the session is being recorded and it will be hosted on both IntelliJ Ideas YouTube channel and JetBrains Twitch channel. So if you haven't already subscribed to our channel, now is the time to do so. And I'm very sure you will like the video. If you do, please do not forget to like the video. And with that, to Anton, I'll be backstage and um, have fun with your session. Thanks for the introduction, Mala. And uh, hello, everybody, again. I hope uh, the evening will go without, you know, uh, will not go without learning and new stuff. I enjoy showing demos, and I really enjoy showing demos with IntelliJ, and uh, today will not be an exception. Uh, we will actually start with a few slides before that, uh, while the audience, while the new folks are coming to the stream, I have a few slides for you to start a discussion, uh, basically. And uh, since we're talking about code quality today, specifically, uh, it's uh, a different, it means a different thing for different people. As I figured, I had a few discussions on Twitter and uh, with my friends and uh, colleagues uh, about code quality. So I would invite you to share your opinions. What do you think when you hear someone talking about code quality? Because some people would say a quality code is the one that earns money and uh, they don't care about the maintainability aspect of it or any metrics that they can technically calculate on the code. And someone else will say that code quality uh, is coverage, like uh, how well the uh, the code is covered with tests. And someone else will say something different. So feel free to write in the chat. Uh, I, I would love to learn your about your opinions uh, on the subject. Uh, but uh, a few years ago, maybe 10 years ago, 
um, there was a big movement on with along with DevOps movement uh, about shifting the testing to the left in the process, like in, in the process of uh, software development. And if you go in Google, you will actually find uh, something like this. Uh, you, you, you Google for shift left, you will find probably 10 or 20 results uh, in the Google search will tell you about testing. So it kind of implies that uh, code quality starts with testing. The idea is nice. Uh, I mean, to bring uh, the testing in development process into the early stages as you know as early as possible. But the the picture itself is something is not right here. I, I think um, it kind of implies that uh, quality starts with testing, and uh, software developers I think would disagree that it might start earlier, not just with testing. Of course, we have. A lot of means for supporting the code quality through the tests. We have unit tests, we have uh, integration tests, we have tools for working with tests. You know, like various frameworks and and uh, code coverage tools and so on. But uh, what else could be there? Uh, and uh, if we look around, we have tooling that is not about testing, but also about code quality and uh, there is a discipline. Oh, there is another picture I, I found on a Launchable uh, company website that, uh, well, it, it doesn't say exactly that, but uh, my interpretation of this picture is that there, are, there is a place for different kind, kinds of different phases for the code quality in, in the project development cycle. Like some of the things you bring as a, to to the early stages of the project. and But there is a uh, room for conventional testing. There's a room even after the deployment, when you deploy your software to production, to live environments, then there's still room for testing. So it actually goes both ways, not only to the left, but also to the right. And uh, what are the other um, means for like working with the quality of the project. There's a whole discipline about metrics. Like I was keen on metrics myself uh, some time ago, like uh, checking what's the code coverage and uh, checking uh, the cyclomatic complexity of uh, my functions in, in the code and so on. So those are nice things to have and monitor. And then you get nice dashboards with all kind of uh, burn down charts or like, uh, you know, bars and, and figures. Uh, and I also had discussions about this with uh, the peers and um, there, there are opinions that, well, those are nice things to have indeed, but they may spark um, wrong intentions, like uh, code coverage, for instance, you, you may create code coverage for about 100%, but you don't assert anything for instance, or uh, you are developing tests for the sake of getting uh, higher code percent code coverage, but uh, well, without actually putting any thoughts into the quality of the tests it's themselves. So it's a controversial topic. So if you have an opinion about that, uh, feel free to comment in the chat as well. Uh, the other interesting uh, thing to monitor in your projects is actually uh, the inspections, right? The inspections uh, and, and uh, the issues that you may find in, in the projects. But before we go there, uh, since a lot of people might be interested in uh, calculating the metrics, this is not something we have in Kadana, but this is something is provided by the third party plugins in IntelliJ. So in IntelliJ, if we go and install those plugins we can find them on the marketplace plugins mm, where where are the plugins there are the plugins uh i have found the metrics reloaded plugin i think uh, like not just found i mean i i've been using it for 20 years uh my colleague uh, buzz is actually developing it and i've been using it since 2004 and specifically for monitoring the complexity of uh the methods in the 
project uh, because, well, the more complex method it is, the harder it is to maintain and the more tests you need to cover all the use cases that are present uh, like or described in, in the function. And there is a metrics tree plugin that I just discovered that calculates uh, nice uh, scientific metrics uh, across your project. So you, you get nice reports uh, about every individual piece of your code, or if you go and look up the metrics tree plugin, it calculates some interesting metrics about your project, like the, the maintainability index and, and uh, this kind of things. Um, the figure alone might not, not tell you much. So, I mean, let's, let's imagine I calculated the uh, maintainability index uh, about my project on my project and it tells me 100. What do I do with that? Like just the figure alone would not tell me much, but this figure can tell me something in over a period of time if my complexity is growing or or declining and uh, the maintainability of my project is improving. But if your 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 project maintainability index, for instance, is great, let's say it's uh, like as the figure says, like between zero and nine is a good maintainability index. Imagine you have that, and then you have a few issues in your code that are causing the software to crash maybe it's not the great idea to uh, monitor only the metrics, but actually find issues in the code. And uh, IntelliJ is great with that and uh, actually can uh, show you quite a few things while you're developing. So like something like um, incorrect configuration parameters, you, you, you will... Uh, see that something is highlighted in your configuration file and saying, hey, this configuration key is like, uh, could, will not be found when you actually uh, are running uh, your, your, your program. So it will crash, it will not find the configuration parameter in the, in the properties file, or you don't handle the resources correctly, or there are some null safety issues, like there's potentially, uh, running into a null pointer exception, for instance, or or uh, like uh, the code maturity issues, like using some older versions of the APIs, and then the ID would tell you that. And of course, like duplicates and so on. Uh, the list is very long uh, in IntelliJ, the list of inspections. And uh, in Kadana, we use the same inspections by the same uh, code static static analysis engines that are running in IntelliJ. And uh, the recommended profile uh, includes more than 2,000 of those inspections of various uh, severity uh, levels. So today, my goal is to show you uh, a few things, a few tricks, how you can work with uh, inspections in IntelliJ. And uh, then we will see how you can use the same technology with Kadana for your teamwork. And uh, well, you are probably familiar with this little uh, annoying icons in your editor. Like when you, when you open the editor and something is not great uh, with your code, like uh, some potential you know, issues, either high, high severity issues or something could be improved. IntelliJ warns you about that and tells you, hey, there, there, there are markers on the sidebar. We will see those in a moment that something could be improved. And uh, there's a dialogue for that, for setting it all up. And we're going to spend some time here now uh, exploring those. And uh, I have a project, this little project here. Uh, in fact, if you want to follow along and uh, you would like to uh, get all those examples, I do have those on GitHub under my GitHub account. Uh, the repository is called Java Inspections. So there are just, it's a very simple project, uh, simple Maven project, and there's just a few Java classes. So you, you may uh, pull this code uh, in, on your computer, 
play along with it uh, and play with uh, the settings of the inspections like afterwards. So let's see, uh, we have uh, a few files in the project. Uh, well, some of the examples of critical issues or high severity issues, but in IntelliJ actually provides you a little more than just check for the very critical issues. It also helps you migrating from the old APIs. For instance, if you are using older Java versions and now you are migrating to the newer versions of Java, like from 8 to 21, for instance, then uh, there are new features in, in the APIs in the core library in the JDK, and, and IntelliJ will help you converting the, this kind of code. Of course, now safety issues, and well, I have some a helper, helper problems factory because we are in a Java project. Uh, Right, so let's let's explore a bit how do the uh, inspections are configured in IntelliJ. If we go into the settings, uh, they are right here. So the plugins here is not what we are looking for, but we can locate by looking for inspections. Inspections. There they are. Inspections. There is a huge list, and uh, well, obviously going through the whole list. Is not that efficient. We can use uh, some filters since we are in a Java project and might be interested only in Java right now. Let's uh, filter by language, language. And then we might be interested in critical issues because like there might be a lot of small issues that we are not interested to fix right now, but the errors and, and critical issues are are definitely something that we are interested in. And uh, we could see that there are code maturity issues, for instance, like the usage of some API that is marked for removal. So you might be using a deprecated API, and uh, this deprecated API might stay there for quite a while, and there might not be an alternative yet. Even like the author of the library might have marked uh, some API or a method as deprecated, but he doesn't have an intention to remove it yet. But once it's marked for removal, well, it means that the alternative uh, like solution is coming and you better switch to that one. And therefore it, it's made critical. And uh, properties files, this one I mentioned uh, already before, uh, like invalid property key, when your program starts and doesn't find uh, the correct configuration parameter, most likely it will fail. And a lot of um, a lot of uh, postmortems that you can find on on GitHub, like uh, the collections of postmortems, are actually about incorrect configuration, not about the software bug. All right, uh, let's let's explore a little more. What, what else we can do and what el what are the other issues we may find in this project? So for instance, um, some high severity issues like a deprecated method is, is considered, a use of deprecated method is considered a high severity issue. So at one point of time, you will have to migrate to the new API or unreachable code, for instance, is also something that might be a bug because the code is there, but it's not executed. It's unreachable. Maybe it's a bug. So there's like no way to say that for sure, but you better pay attention to that one. Or let's explore the Java migration aids. We are not going to, you know, explore all the inspections that IntelliJ provides, but I want to show you just a few uh, things. Like, for instance, uh, Mala just uh, published a nice blog post about um, switch expression, uh, the very comprehensive one. And in IntelliJ, we do have an inspection that detects that there is a use of switch statement, and you can convert it to a switch expression. So there's an ins inspection that detects some pattern in the code, and it helps you to convert it or to improve it even. Uh, and and there there is more like uh, for instance, the the method could could be replaced with a method reference, or 
some anonymous class could be replaced with a lambda or even more uh, like the whole loop in this method could be replaced with a single method call in the newer version of Java, like replace all string uh, and the reference to a function to lowercase. Nice. Or even for the newer versions, uh, using pattern variable, for instance, instead of uh, casting to the real type. All right. Uh, so all kind of uh, various inspections that are present in IntelliJ uh, are now uh, can be can be used in Kadana, and we will we will dive into that in a few moments after we explore a few more possibilities here. So when working with the, with inspections, you kind of can enable and disable them. Like you you can go to this inspections dialog, uh, you know, select whatever inspections you consider to be critical. You may even change the criticality level. For, for instance, if I want to say that I don't tolerate any of the print stack trace statements in my code and I want to set the severity to an error, I'm free to do that. And uh, even I can create different, uh, different uh, profiles like for different situations and i can slice those profiles to the different scopes scopes as well so the in one package my uh, I, I may have one configuration of of a specific inspection and in the other one i may switch it off or have a different uh figure for 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 the configuration so for instance i have a metrics uh package here where i collected a couple of uh, uh, code examples where you have a metric on the code used as an in inspection. So for instance, when you have a constructor that uses too many parameters, that's kind of a smell in the code. And uh, uh, IntelliJ will tell you that there are too many parameters. You might want to extract or group them some somehow into a domain object. This one is more like a coding style inspection, but the other one I have is about the complexity. So I was mentioning the cyclomatic complexity of the code. And if you look at this one, there are a lot of branches in the code and I might need to implement um, quite a number of tests to, uh, to get a good coverage. And the higher the cyclomatic complexity of the code is, it's the higher the, the harder it's to maintain uh, this code and to refactor, to make changes. And therefore, uh, the inspection uh, for checking this kind of things uh, is also useful. You know, it warns you that something in your code is getting too complex. Maybe you want to pay attention to that one. And this inspection uh, overly called complex method let's let's check that one overly complex method i have reconfigured it a little bit so uh there is a default there is a default configuration for it that checks if the complexity limit is uh, not greater than 10 uh, but i have introduced my custom scope this is something that you might not be familiar with and uh might might uh, have seen actually in the project view right here. So above the project tree, there's this drop down saying the project, the packages, tests, and so on. Those are scopes, and you may create your custom scope in there. So for instance, I have a scope that is called. Uh, let me find it. Scopes, yeah scopes i have my custom scope my scope that includes just one package and for that package i want or for that scope basically for any packages i included into that scope i want to configure an inspection uh, for complex complex method complex for overly complex method in that specific scope 
to be four, like not not greater than four. So that's why that's why uh, IntelliJ detects this method as overly complex and says it's the cyclomatic cyclomatic complexity of that one is five, right? So it will be reported. Uh, let me check real quick. What else do I have? Any any examples of the code? Uh, right here. Anton, I have a quick question. You mentioned about the plugins that you talked about to uh, check the complexity of the code in the beginning. And now the inspections that you have shown, uh, are that a part of the plugins or does that come by default in IntelliJ IDEA? Because the folks uh, who we, are watching now, they might be confused. Yeah, thanks for the question. Um, the inspection is built in into the um, IntelliJ, but mm -hmm. it doesn't provide you a report. So the plugins okay. that I showed before, they give you a nice summary of all the methods and what are the complexities of those methods and averages and by class, by package and, and overall. Yeah. Okay, that makes sense. Thank you. Nice. Thanks for the questions, folks. And uh, yeah, so now, like, uh, depending on the situation, uh, depending on the issue that IntelliJ detected, we we can either uh, let's let's find something. We can just either go and fix them one by one, or we need to think a little, stop and think a little bit, and and somehow fix the issue because there is no direct automated fix available in, in some in some situations, like for the uh, the complexity metric there's you know you, you you have to do it manually of course for instance ex extract some parts of the method into or like some branches into uh separate dedicated methods that could be uh tested you know in isolation for instance now i uh, some you, you might have noticed that some of the inspections are disabled for instance, here and the others, probably they might be interested, interesting to you, and you might want to uh, enable them. And for that, I recommend creating your own profile. Like you can duplicate the project default profile, duplicate, create the name, and uh, enable new inspections there, so that it would be you know, easy for you to see uh, what is the default and what is the the custom profile. I have three profiles, the project default, the one that I have modified for myself, and then I have this paranoid profile that enables all the inspections and detects everything. Uh, so it becomes very annoying. Uh, some of the inspections that you might find in the in the settings, are uh, configured with this uh, with a severity level no highlighting. Uh, what does it mean? It means that IntelliJ detects some of the code. Like I will show you, I will show you an example of that. Uh, for instance, if we have a method public uh, void example, and in that method we have something like this, like var x equals one and then not even that like we would have something like int x without uh, the assignment and then we assign something to that variable as you can see well uh, there is a like the value one assigned to x is never used right so we we might want to use this value somehow like uh, print it out so now there is nothing wrong with the x variable, but if you hit Alt Enter, it will tell you that you can join the declaration and assignment. So there are some inspections that don't bring any highlighting, but enable this kind of quick fixes uh, to, um, to, to the elements of your code. So you can use Alt Enter to invoke this quick fix. and um, in fact, this quick fix can be automated with Kadana in a batch mode, and we will see how it works as well. So now 
my inspections work and uh, I can check all of them or I can even run an individual inspection uh, by name. Like, let's see, run inspection by name. Uh, there is a special action for that. And if I know the inspection name, like overly complex method, I, I may run it and uh, configure the scope for it. Maybe I just want to run this inspection on a single file, maybe in a package and so on. Or I can also run all the inspections in a profile that I select via this code inspect code menu. And there as well, I can select the inspection profile and the scope for, for this profile and then get a full report. But this all happens on my local machine. Now the question is, how do I ensure that the same technology, the same inspections, the same engines would work for the good of my team, right? And this is where Kadana comes in. And uh, the Kadana plugin uh, in, in, in IntelliJ comes bundled by default. Uh, it actually, Kadana itself is a collection of linters, an ID plugin, and a dashboard that we host in, uh, in our service uh, to display the report. But you don't have to go there immediately. You don't have to go to the cloud service immediately. You can try it locally first and see what kind of reports you, uh, you, you, you can get by running the inspections and then tailor the configuration locally without actually going through CI server and waiting too much. You can tailor it locally, and then once you're ready, you can proceed going through CI, building the pipelines, and so on. And uh, let's check that. Let's check how it works. There is a tools menu, and in the tools menu, we have a Kadana submenu that uh, offers you to try Kadana analysis you know, locally. So if we run that, it actually will generate the configuration file uh when when you don't have one it's kadana it's called kadana.yaml and uh with the default settings by default it generates uh the profile uh, configuration and there are a few profiles so we have profiles inspection profiles in intellij and one profile is basically a set of inspections with their configurations and in kadana we have grouped we have regrouped those profiles, uh, tailoring for performance needs and and for uh, like, for instance, if you are uh, running a huge project, uh, the inspection profile on a huge project, you might get too many issues, and then you might want to fall back on something like more tailorable and to check uh, only some limited set of issues if they present in your project and this is what our team did by default there are uh, multiple profiles like three of them actually there's empty profile as well just for sanity checks or not even for sanity checks just to check if if kadana starts but the three profiles that we have for the users the sanity profile is basically very very minimal profile that checks if your project is healthy. I mean, if it compiles even uh, without actually running the build, then there is a starter profile that includes a limited set of inspections or like uh, includes not all the inspections that uh, you, you can run. Uh, this is specifically for the cases when uh, when your project is huge and uh, the results are you know overwhelming and you know that uh, to fix all those issues in your project is going to take time. And by default, we actually recommend using the recommended profile. It's in the name, of course. So uh, let's enable this recommended profile because uh, my project is, you know, it's just a few files. And uh, if we enable the starter profile, it will just not find whatever uh, whatever is interesting for us. And then uh, there is a version for the JDK for the CI pipeline uh, that will be used. And uh, the linter, 
ID or linter name, and this name is uh, the Docker image name, which you can find uh, in uh, Docker Hub. Let's let's actually find that so that you know where where to look for for this new information. Kadana for JVM. No, sorry, it's it should be on the Docker Hub. Docker, Docker, Kadana, JVM. Yeah, it's right here. So that's that's the page for the images, and you can check the information about the uh, the images and uh, what what else is available. There is even more images by by JetBrains, but basically you can find them on on Docker Hub. So that's the image image name. And uh, there are some advanced options for running. Uh, this is the baseline option that was included currently automatically because I have this file in my project. By default, you will not have that when you're just starting, and uh, I will switch it off. So we we mimic the situation when I start uh, from from the scratch this will be your your starter configuration basically and if i run this analysis now what happens is that uh the project is already indexed right and uh, we don't need to wait until the first analysis phase is, is complete we just run the inspections basically the same way as we would have run the inspections from intellij but now with kadana profile we get the report by the you know the the classical tree like view uh, of uh, of the issues that were detected that's located in the problems tab right so if we try to locate this tab right here so uh, the problems tab is under command 6 shortcut and this server side analysis is what what is provided by kadana what I want you to take a look at when you try it for the first time is this little link right here. Open the Kadana report in the browser. So if you click that one, it actually opened uh, on, on the other screen. It opened uh, the, the browser for me. Let, me. let me bring it to this screen. So you see, it's running locally. It's run. It it's running the report locally, and now I get all the same issues that I just uh, got in the report in the ID. I get a little bit different browsing experience here. Like uh, I can inspect the same. I can oversee the same results, but now I can also filter them and uh, tailor my configuration. So whatever actions I'm doing here. Like if I want to exclude the criticals uh, file from from the inspections, I can, for instance, exclude exclude this file, and I don't have anything else to show. Like maybe that wasn't the greatest idea, but all the uh, changes that I did. Oh, it actually excluded the package. Sorry, not not just the file. So all the changes I made to the configuration are reflected in the um, in the file in memory. So if I want to synchronize that with uh, my my ID with the file in my ID, I can just click Update Kadana YAML and uh, it will be loaded back into the ID. I'm not going to change that right now. So you see, it's like. Uh, I'm, I'm playing with the configurations for the CI, for the teamwork. I will tailor my configuration for the Kadana checks that will run will be run on the server, but locally. So I don't have to go through the all, like the long cycle of configuring it all. And uh, once I have that done, there will be a question. Uh, what happens if I want the same inspections, the same inspections from uh, from my ID, like exactly how I clicked all those checkboxes 
uh, how do I run those in Kadana? Because Kadana has a slightly different profile, uh, profile configuration. So for this, uh, when when we when we saved uh, the custom profile, for instance, here my inspection profile. So I gave it a name. I have a, a like a custom profile basically in my ID locally. Then this uh, profile is stored, the configuration for that profile is stored under .idea inspection profiles directory in this XML file. And uh, the name for this profile is actually the profile, the name that we can use in the configuration file. So my inspection profile is going to be the name of the profile that I want to use in CI. So once I, I, I do that, I can actually um, just, you know, submit uh, the configuration to the CI and, um, and, and get the results there. Now, how do I configure Kadana in CI? In the same tools view in Kadana uh, submenu, there is a add Kadana to CI pipeline um, action. And there are helpers for creating the configuration for different CI servers like uh, GitHub Actions and TeamCity and GitLab and so on. I have already configured uh, the workflow for GitHub Actions and uh, because like my, my project is hosted on GitHub and I already have the configuration. So it did not overwrite my initial configuration. We will I will walk you through what did I configure there? Uh, but if I didn't have a configuration, then it would create one by default with uh, with this default settings uh, for GitHub Actions. Okay, so let's take a look at the uh, configuration for GitHub Actions. There, I have three steps in the pipeline. So just to mimic, you know, the 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 real life example there. Uh, first of all, I, I'm going to run the the builds whenever I push any changes to to my repository in the main branch. I can configure that for multiple branches, and so I may have different strategies for different branches. Then I think it's a good practice not to start running the inspections immediately, but first verify if your project is actually healthy. If it builds, if the tests uh, run, and uh, if you know all the tests pass, in that case, I think the next stage is pretty logical to run the uh, inspections, but only when the the tests pass. So the other step that I have is the Kadana step, uh, and it depends. It requires that. Uh, that the verify step completes. So it needs verify step to complete. And then I can use the checkout action to check out the project uh, and run the Kadana scan with, uh, you know, with uh, any configuration that I like. In here, I configured some extra uh, parameters to enable uh, an interesting feature. Uh, in in GitHub Actions, whenever your your test you know your tests pass and uh, the checks pass, remember about automated uh, migrations and automated fixes in Kadana in IntelliJ. So Kadana can trigger those automated fixes and submit a a pull request. So this is what I have configured here. I have configured the permissions for the pull requests in GitHub Actions. And I have configured uh, apply fixes um, apply fixes uh, parameter to trigger to trigger the uh, automated automated uh, conversion of you know uh, of the code that IntelliJ detected, and then it will create a new pull request for the for the code or for the project uh, after the uh, fixes are applied. One thing that I need to work uh, with Kadana uh, the, uh, that uses the ultimate edition um, 
Linter is Kadana token that is acquired from from the organization in in Kadana Cloud. So if I go to Kadana Cloud and I create a project, uh, if I let's say create a new new project for this for this uh, case, like next, it actually demo. It actually will give you a, a token that I will then use to send the reports into the dashboard. And, and this token is configured in GitHub Actions. So if I go to the project in the settings, there is uh, secrets and variables for actions where I will then define this Kadana token that I just acquired from, from the cloud dashboard, from Kadana cloud dashboard. Okay, so once it's configured and once my inspections are run, once everything is correct, I can mimic another step in the, in the pipeline to do some deployment step. Uh, here I just, you know, print out the line that let's deploy something. But uh, it will result, the whole configuration will result in a pipeline with three steps where we verify the project first, we run the inspections, and then uh, do some extra step for, for completing the whole pipeline. So let's see. Let's see. Uh, can, I, can I make a commit maybe? Uh, in fact, one little thing that is missing from here is is one little configuration key to apply the fixes strategy. So Kadana needs to know if if it can apply the fixes or not. And, and before you move forward with uh, going to the segment where you, you talk about uh, pushing the code and then doing some things there, there's a question which I thought would be relevant. Uh, it's from Patrick, and he's asking, is it possible to run Kodana analysis, not inspections in IntelliJ IDEA before commit or push automatically and interrupt the action if Kodana reveals any problems? That's an interesting question. I think there, there is no one way of doing it. Um, so Kodana analysis, mm -hmm. Is is Kadana like Kadana analysis consists of uh, IntelliJ inspections, but you yes. want to trigger Kadana analysis specifically before pushing the changes. I don't think it's automated. We do have like when when we commit in IntelliJ, we can uh, ask it to analyze the code, but this is exactly about running the inspections i'm not sure if yeah i can run the uh, inspection profile so it then in that case it will be in sync uh what i have configured in my kadana configuration but uh, then uh, anyone would see the but, results in the problem view window the way we run yeah. inspections and profiles in intelligent idea right right so, so it's Polina not also... it's, it's, it's not the same like uh, getting the Kadana mm -hmm. recommended profile into mm -hmm. this into this phase. It's rather that we we configure the uh, IntelliJ profile with IntelliJ inspections and say mm -hmm. Kadana, please run this set of inspections for us. Right. right. And Polina also added that this feature currently is not available, and uh, yeah. the team is seeing the need for this, and probably will have it in one of our future releases. Exactly. So Thank what you. we can do now is we, we can we can try pushing the uh, let's let's test let's test our our solution and the configuration and if I push to the repository let's see how it works. I have now pushed the the changes into. In, into the repository, and uh, since we had the trigger configured for for the push into the main branch, then 
we can see that Kadana actions started. And uh, let's let's see how it goes. Uh, I hope that uh, it will run fast enough. Like there is a verify step first, and then it took only 18, 18 seconds, and then there is analysis phase uh, that starts now. Meanwhile, are, are there any more questions in in the chat? Maybe is there anything? Yes, there's one question which came in now. So this is about um, how the YAML file that you talked about. How is that different to a Docker file? So That's an Mikhail interesting asked, question. <laughs> Mikhail asked for uh, some additional information. Uh, and he was trying to clarify whether he means kudana.yaml is different from a Docker file. And yes, so that was the question. How is Kodana YAML different from the Docker file? Probably what uh, I think this user is looking at is to kind of to understand how much YAML they need to know to use Kodana, if that could be one way to answer that. Um, yeah, like I, I need to uh, come up with uh, extra information for myself for this to answer this question. I mean, Kadana mm -hmm. uh, YAML is for configuring Kadana, how Kadana will yes. uh, run the inspections, what profiles, and so on. If we are using mm -hmm. the uh, the Kadana recommended profile, for instance, Kadana recommended profile then there are mm -hmm. options for us to include or uh, uh, exclude any any uh, inspections or exclude inspections on the specific parts of the project and so on docker file mm -hmm. is about building the docker image so those are two very different things like um the only the, the only connection between those two is when we specify the linter and there we say the name of the docker image that should be applied basically it's the version that we are interested in like v2023.3 for instance if i want to uh, fix the version for all the runs that i'm doing I hope this right. answers the question. Yes, I, I believe the uh, the confusion is due to the uh, the extensions YAML file, both of them being YAML file. I think that was the reason of the question. I assume that. Yeah. Um, okay. Yes, maybe, maybe. So maybe. we see yeah. that the job passed, and uh, we the verify step succeeded, the Kadana step succeeded, and the deploy step of course, also succeeded. But uh, let's explore a little bit what's in the logs. Because what, what will happen there is we will see uh, the logs from the linter and uh, we'll see the report. Like the it, it's printed out into the standard output and uh, GitHub Actions capture that and we can explore the, the result in the report in the logs. Uh, but also in the logs, we will see that it created a new branch and it submitted a, a pull request uh, with Kadana, quick fixes, and some number in there. And uh, in, in fact, in the summary page, we will see the same, the same uh, summary for, for Kadana report as well and then there will be a link to navigate to the cloud report so if we go there uh, we can now see what what are the issues that uh, the linter detected and uh, well we now can browse and de decide okay what's critical what's not critical should we change the configuration and so on like and uh, now there are two two directions for us either we uh, say that okay some of the some of the issues are not critical for instance those low low priority issues and we might want to move them into a baseline and uh, now we have 38 problems less 
but we need to update the configuration uh, for this. And uh, in this case, I need to download this uh, baseline Sarif file into my project. So I do have that already in, in my in my uh, project, like kadana.sarif.json. And uh, to for it to be recognized in CI, I need to adjust the uh, configuration of GitHub Actions and add uh, an extra option, the baseline option that refers to that file. So that's a relative path. If I have it somewhere in the folder, like some folder, for instance, uh, then I need to point at the exact location. But since this file is in the root of my project, then I can just uh, specify the name. And now I'm going to push that as well uh, to keep the actions running. Uh, let's let's test with baseline. So we get more runs in GitHub Actions. But meanwhile, in fact, what happened, remember about the branch that I mentioned, uh, uh, we, we discovered in the log uh, that some branch was created. And if we go to the project again, there will be a new uh, pull request created by Kadana. And we can inspect what did Kadana suggest uh, to improve in our code. So there is a diff with the applied quick fixes. So we can see, for instance, Java migration. Java migration. So you can see it suggests uh, out to automatically convert the statement, the switch statement, to the switch expression for instance so whatever automatic conversions are available can be automated using using kadana and 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 this kind of a workflow uh let's see besides besides this kind of checks and the report and the conversions what else could we do there what, what else uh can kadana help us with uh of course, there is a baseline. I already mentioned we we can monitor the telemetry uh, if if our project is doing better over time or not. You see, I had at some point I used to have four hundred forty four problems in my project. It's because I enabled uh, this paranoid profile that enabled all the checks in in CI. Uh, that is why I have more of them uh, reported, and then. You can see there is a license audit. This is something interesting for, for many projects to actually check if they are compliant with uh, the open source licensing. Uh, in this project, I don't have a good use case, but there is another project that I have scanned and uh, that's called Pet Clinic. That's a Spring Pet Clinic application. Uh, there are a few issues, uh, and currently it doesn't pass the license audit. There are a few false positives in the trans transitive dependencies, but there is at least one dependency that is not compliant with the license of this project. Is uh, my my SQL uh, driver, my SQL JDBC driver, which is LGPL only. And uh, it doesn't have class path ex uh, exception, therefore it's reported. Uh, it's not that Spring Pet Cl Clinic violates anything. It's an open source project, and the sources are available. But uh, theoretically, if it was a closed source project, then it would violate the license of that dependency. So that's that's an interesting moment, and uh, there is more information that you can get uh, about uh, the licenses, like the, how the license licenses are compliant. There is a matrix configured for for these checks. Uh, like you can open the license rules, and you know browse by the type of the license, what licenses are compliant with your license, and what licenses are not compliant or might not be compliant with your with your project. Uh, and another 
interesting feature and another interesting check that we have is about vulnerabilities so there are vulnerable dependencies in in that specific version of spring uh pet clinic like uh the org yaml snake yaml dependencies for uh, dependency for instance and uh, if i open the report i can see there is a cve associated with uh, this version of the library uh, that is powered. And this information comes from check marks uh, database. And I can read more about the, this vulnerability and why, why it's there. So that's, that's pretty interesting uh, feature. Besides GitHub Actions, of course, you can you know, configure any other CI, like for instance, TeamCity. And in TeamCity, I have configured uh, the, uh, the trigger to run the checks for, for the pull requests that Kadana just created in GitHub Actions. So the workflow was that I pushed the changes into the main branch in GitHub repository. We executed GitHub Actions, uh, which run Kadana inspections with uh, the pull request that was created by Kadana scan action. And for that pull request, I'm triggering a new workflow in TeamCity that also runs like in the cloud for me, uh, checking that pull request. Uh, one thing to know for you is that uh, you shouldn't be running the builds automatically on the pull requests. But here in this uh, configuration, let me show that what I'm doing. Uh, there are a few build steps in TeamCity. Uh, the first step, I have disabled that so that it doesn't run the code. It wouldn't execute any uh, tests automatically on the pull request because of the security concerns. But I can run Kadana checks and verify if uh, this pull request did not actually break anything, right? Uh, that's uh, that's useful thing to do verifying the pull requests and once it's done it will also report uh the the status of the project into my kadana dashboard let me go back to to the dashboard there i have a separate project for the inspections that are run by team city on the pull requests and then i can check aha okay now i have 131 problems a little less than in the original uh, report. So basically the fixes that Kadana suggested with the pull request actually decreased the uh, number of issues uh, in the report, right? So this is, this is how I automated this stuff. Uh, I think this is what I wanted to show you one little thing, one, one more little thing uh, is how you get the report into your ID because you you can browse those reports in the cloud, but you, do, you have to log into that dashboard, maybe not so convenient. In fact, when you're logged in uh, with your Kadana cloud uh, account, you get uh, to see all the projects that are exposed by your organization and i can java java inspections i can find uh, i can find my project in this list and then link it so whenever i have a new report i can just pull it in uh, and browse locally without going to Kadana, Kadana Cloud dashboard. Yeah, now this one. Okay, so now the project is linked. And if I go to the projects view, uh, not, not the projects, the problems view, on the server side analysis tab, I can get uh, to browse all those issues again, right? All right, folks, I, I, this is what I wanted to cover today and show you how to, 
how to use inspections in IntelliJ, what kind of benefits you can get, and uh, how to, you know, uh, get any use of those inspections in, in the cloud for your teamwork. Uh, let me know, uh, probably in Twitter or in the comments or you now after this video is published in the comments to this video, if you learned anything and uh, if you liked it. So first of all, thank you, Anton. That was a great session. Uh, I liked it very much. And before, yes. So uh, everyone watching the session, it would be great if you could rate the session and share your feedback. It really helps us to uh, listen to you and uh, accordingly plan our next sessions. And Anton, I have uh, two quick questions for you. Um, Polina has already answered one of them. I was just wondering if you would like to add something. And I assume you would kind of be hearing these similar questions to these where people are comparing Kodana with the uh, other tools like Sonacube. So mm -hmm. this is about, this is the question. And I would also show the answer that Polina had. So if you want to probably add anything to it. So this is the first what? one. Yes. This is this is exactly what I wanted to say that Kadana uses IntelliJ mm -hmm. IntelliJ inspections and uh, whatever it's actually possible to use also the inspections that are uh, coming from the plugins. So if there is a plugin mm -hmm. for a specific technology, like uh, we do have uh, plugins for um, Spring support, for instance, and those uh, Spring plugins actually provide extra inspections for Spring specifically, then then you are able to get those into the reports, in, in Kadana reports and so on. Uh, uh, one one thing, you know, in favor of uh, SonarCube probably is that it has been on the market for much longer time and uh, people know about SonarCube much more than about Kadana. And Kadana is a young and ambitious project that uh, you know, stands on the, on the shoulders of Giant. The Giant is IntelliJ IDEA. Mm -hmm. And uh, mm -hmm. we, we hope to bring all the latest and greatest into Kadana as well. Makes sense. Uh, the next question is from David, and he is talking about offloading the static analysis to the server. Also means there are potentially more resources available compared to running in the IDE locally. Do you then also run more complex analysis? Uh, for example, whole program points to or data flow analysis? I well, that's a great comment about offloading uh, for computational resources. Of course, that's one of the reasons you would like to run static analysis mm -hmm. in, in offline somewhere on uh, on a server. Um, uh, regarding the extra analysis is about configuration, right? So you enable more inspections mm -hmm. in that case, and uh, you have more freedom to run heavy, heavy computational, uh, you know, inspections on, on the server. So it's exactly about configuration. Right. And there's a question from Anurag. I think it's about the pricing. And uh, if I'm not wrong, Polina answered that somewhere that there are two versions. One is the paid one and one is the free version. Let me quickly check that. Oh my God. Why did this happen? I had that message. Okay, so yes, so here's your answer. You can go and access <laughs> this link and view the pricing that is available. Right. Okay, so there were other questions, but uh, Mikhail and Polina have already answered them all. So we don't have any more questions for you. Um, once again, thank you so much, Anton. That was a great session. And everyone who is watching, um, I would like to show the other links that you could use to ping Anton, as you mentioned, if you have any comment about this session or otherwise you can reach out to him using these uh, links. And um, yes, uh, once again, everyone's watching. Thanks for your participation. Thanks for asking questions. Thanks for being here. And uh, we really hope you learned a lot from the session as I did.
And if you haven't subscribed, subscribe to our channel and like the video. And uh, Anton, if you have any closing comments. Um, well, thanks everybody for coming and uh, I hope you enjoyed the session and uh, have a nice uh, evening, uh, day, whenever you watch the video. Yes, and before we say bye, stay tuned for our next idea live stream, which is on 28th of March, Thursday, and when we'll be talking about Spring AI from Dan Vega. So until then, bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye.